Early this morning, Nexon, the Seoul Korea-based developer and publisher, posted their first full reveal trailer for their upcoming looter shooter, The First Descendant. The teaser, which dropped earlier this month, generated a lot of interest and hype over the game, and the full-length trailer absolutely blew me away. If you've already seen the trailer, skip to the time you see on screen here to hear my opinions. First, I'll play the trailer in full for you, and then I'll let you know my thoughts, my hopes, my concerns for the game after that. So sit back and enjoy this very dynamic three-minute trailer. We always ask questions. What is it that actually exists? Where does the origin come from? Where are we headed to in the end? If you feel confused, just reload your gun. So there it is, the first full look at the first Descendant. There are a handful of things that really stick out to me and I'm gonna list off first all of my positive observations about this trailer. Uh, my very first initial reaction is, I'll look at all that color. <laughs> I know that sounds shallow, but it really is a huge part of gaming for me, is having vibrant environments and gear that really pops. And it looks like Nexon is really trying to take full advantage of the Unreal Engine 5 to produce this look. So many games that are pretty decent kind of fall flat for me when it comes to their color palette, which is really bland. You know, Borderlands 1, a phenomenal looter, but the environments, they looked very washed and colorless from start to finish, and that was a real drawback for me. The Fallout series, again, incredible, but the barren wasteland vibe, it gets repetitive. A looter game like this for me really needs to have vibrant color pops if I'm going to really connect to the world. And this trailer, it shows us snowy environments, deserts with tall rocky formations, overgrown grassy and forested regions, and uh, futuristic alien tech ridden locations too. But uh, beyond that, it's the color I see on the characters as well that also grabs me. The bright green poison vibes I get off this Descendant, or the icy frost abilities from the Descendant named Viesa. The crackling blue electricity and the radiant smoldering flames. 
So at the very least, we know that this game will be visually stunning. But as we saw with Godfall, you can't just ride on visuals alone. The second major observation I'm making is how the developer really wants the Descendants' body type and build to come through as a core part of their character and identity. Uh, in Destiny, the main game I cover, that's not really a thing. You know, you're either a dude or a woman, and all the armor covers most of that anatomy up, and that's really the approach that Bungie wanted to have with character identity. But Nexon seems to be sticking to their roots based on the games that they've developed and published over the years. And if you want to be a hulking tank with broad shoulders, you can do that. But if you want your character to show off their feminine features and come across as a high class and sexy woman, then you can do that too with high heels as part of your setup and armor that accentuates your body type. But maybe you really want to play as a descendant who is less flashy and more the soldier look. Hey, you've got that. Or if you want to be stealthy and crafty and to convey that with your descendant, you've got that too. And that takes me to my third observation, and that's that class identity also seems to be a big focus. So a lot of cooperative looter shooters, they struggle in this department where you want your team's composition to matter, and each player wants to have an identity and a kit that really distinguishes them from their teammates. In this trailer, we see a defender type descendant offering protection for his comrades on the battlefield with some overhead shielding. We see another descendant cover his team's escape by leaving two stationary turrets, sort of like an engineer class, and they shred low level adds in a choke point as he moves to safety. We see a poison descendant infusing their bullets with toxicity. We see a descendant called Viesa who has this elegant frost mage sort of vibe coating enemies and surfaces with ice to slow and freeze and there's definitely your your heavy with the big guns named ajax and the close quarters high speed melee fighter to get that stealth ninja vibe covered too it's always a huge draw to me when a game offers a myriad of different ways to play it makes me want to create multiple characters, and it gives the game more longevity since you can experience the game all over again, but from a completely different gameplay perspective and cadence. My fourth major observation is that the grappling hook seems to be a core part of the movement in this game, and even beyond that, most of these characters show off different movement capabilities that play into the character's strengths, like leaps and sprinting and teleporting. The game appears to have a strong verticality element to it, so that's refreshing because a lot of looters have really leaned hard into the cover-based horizontal gameplay structure. Games like The Division and Outriders, etc. But I really like when you get to interact with the environment itself more and feel really immersed in it as you traverse it more freely, and so the grappling hook seems like it's designed to allow you to do exactly that. We see characters repositioning with it, getting a better vantage point, even using it to close the distance on a group of enemies to get right up in the mix with them, since that seems to be their class's strength. At one point, we see a character using the grappling hook to get on the back of a huge boss-like enemy to rip into the armor. And that takes me to my fifth observation. There seems to be an emphasis on weak points and body parts on these huge enemies, and conversely, there seems to be an emphasis on targeting those points and removing them. I'm willing to bet that this will be similar in some regards to Monster Hunter, where some items, armor, and weapons require specific parts of monsters to be acquired in battle. I feel like there's a good chance that we'll need to farm large bosses like these for materials for crafting or trading for specific armor and weapons in the first Descendant. So those are my observations that have me pretty stoked about this game. I have a couple of concerns that I want to point out too though, because we've been burned by looters in recent years and fool me once is sort of where we're at. First and foremost, we don't get a lot of story in this trailer. It doesn't communicate a very clear story arc or what your character's purpose and drive will be. There's no clear adversary or antagonist. Destiny has stood the test of time because it is very story driven. There are clear adversaries with clear motivations. There are strong characters going through relatable struggles. There's a cast that infuses the Destiny characters with lots of emotion and uniqueness. That's why so many Destiny killers have come and gone and Destiny remains. If the first Descendant is going to genuinely compete long term in this genre, then they're going to need to bring a good narrative out from the start and give us a clear purpose as a character in that world. Now, I was given some additional information courtesy of a press release that does tell us a little more about the story, but none of that really comes through in the trailer, unfortunately. It was very very exciting and flashy and combat focused, which is awesome. It got me hyped, but I definitely feel like the narrative will need to be strong and central if the game is going to stand the test of time. The press release talks about how the Descendants have to fight against an alien invasion led by an alien warlord named Carol. 
this guy here, I'm assuming. But also that waging battle against giant monsters is also a central part of the gameplay and looting loop. This takes place on the continent of Ingress as we fight to defend humanity. But beyond that, we really don't know anything yet. I'm hoping that story trailers will also follow to get us hyped about the battle before the full game launches. My second concern is more about the environments that we'll be fighting in. I'm starting to feel like trench-based environments are getting a little dated. I don't know what the solution to that exactly is, but a lot of these scenes do seem to be set in a location with high walls on either side, sort of controlling how much of the environment you can see and putting limiters on the fights and engagements. I know that's sort of the standard with this genre. Destiny does it, Outriders does it, even The Division uses city blocks and buildings that can't be traveled through as sort of trench style limiters to control combat flow. I'm hoping that the first Descendant will push those walls back a little bit more and let us see more of the environments and have more options for how we travel through them and initiate combat in them. Tight trenches are getting dated for me personally and I'm ready for something fresh and a little less confining. Overall, I have to say I'm feeling pretty excited for this title. I've already added it to my Steam wishlist and I requested access to the beta starting October 20th and going through the 26th. In the beta, we'll have access to 10 different characters to play as I am told. I'm anxious for a new looter that I could really sink my teeth into and this one seems to have a whole lot going for it. And with it being free to play, there's literally nothing to lose trying it out. And I'm here for it. Let me know in the comments section what you're thinking about this game. Are you excited? Disinterested? Somewhere in between? What are your biggest hopes for this title? And what are your biggest fears? Let me know. I'd love to chat about it. Thanks for watching the video. Please feel free to leave a like on it only if you enjoyed it. And subscribe for more future content on The First Descendant.